The Walking Dead is an American post-apocalyptic horror television series developed by Frank Darabont for AMC that is based on the eponymous comic book series by Robert Kirkman, Tony Moore, and Charlie Adlard. Andrew Lincoln plays the show's lead character, Sheriff's Deputy Rick Grimes, who awakens from a coma discovering a world overrun by zombies commonly referred to as walkers. Grimes reunites with his family and becomes the leader of a group he forms with other survivors. Together they struggle to survive and adapt in a post-apocalyptic world filled with walkers and opposing groups of survivors, who are often more dangerous than the walkers themselves. Much of the series takes place in and around Atlanta, Georgia, and Alexandria. Virginia. The Walking Dead premiered in the United States on October 31, 2010, exclusively shown on cable television channel AMC and internationally on Fox International channels. As a result of very favorable Nielsen ratings that rank the show unprecedentedly high for a cable series, AMC has renewed the series each year. Beginning with its third season, the Walking Dead has attracted the most 18 to 49 year old viewers of any cable or broadcast television series. Its eighth season will debut on October 22, 2017. The series has been well received by critics and nominated for several awards, including the Writers Guild of Miracle Award for New Series and the Golden Globe Award for Best Television Series, Drama. An AMC spin off series, Fear the Walking Dead debuted on August 23, 2015. The Walking Dead takes place after the onset of a worldwide zombie apocalypse. The zombies, colloquially referred to as walkers, shamble towards living humans and other creatures to eat them. They are attracted to noise, such as gunshots, and to different scents. For example humans. Humans that they bite or scratch become infected and slowly turn into walkers as well. It is revealed early in the series that all living humans carry this pathogen, so that if they die from any other cause, they will also turn into walkers. The only way to permanently kill a walker is to damage its brain or otherwise fully destroy the body, such as by cremating it. The series centers on Sheriff's Deputy Rick Grimes who wakes up from a coma to discover this apocalypse. He becomes the leader of a group of survivors from the Atlanta, Georgia region as they attempt to sustain themselves and protect themselves not only against attacks by walkers but by other groups of survivors willing to assure their longevity by any means necessary. On January 20, 2010, AMC officially announced that it had ordered a pilot for a possible series adapted from the Walking Dead comic book series with Frank Darabont and Gail Ann Hurd acting as executive producers and Darabont writing and directing. The entire series was pre-ordered based just on the strength of the source material, the television scripts, and Darabont's involvement. In January 2010 a review of the pilot episode's script attracted further attention. The pilot began filming in Atlanta. Georgia on May 15, 2010 after AMC had officially ordered a six-episode first season. The series' remaining episodes began filming on June 2, 2010 with Darabont serving as showrunner. On August 31, 2010, Darabont reported that The Walking Dead had been picked up for a second season, with production to begin in February 2011. On November 8, 2010, AMC confirmed that there would be a second season consisting of 13 episodes. He would also like to include some of the environmental elements that take place during Volume 2 of Kirkman's book. The first season writing staff consisted of series developer and executive producer Frank Darabont, who wrote, co-wrote four of the six episodes, executive producer Charles H. Glee, executive producer and creator of the comic book Robert Kirkman. Co-executive producer Jack Lokiudis, consulting producer Adam Fierro and Glenn Mazzara, all of whom contributed to one episode each. Along with Darabont, who directed the pilot episode, the remaining five were directed by Michelle McLaren, Gwyneth Horder Payton, Joan Rank, Ernest Dickerson and Guy Furland. On December 1, 2010, Deadline.com reported that Darabont had fired his writing staff including executive producer Charles Sheikha Glee, 
and planned to use freelance writers for the second season. Kirkman called the announcement premature and clarified that Agli left to pursue other projects when Darabont decided to stay on as showrunner, and no definitive plans had been made regarding the writing staff for season two. Sheik Agli was brought on to The Walking Dead with the idea that Frank was going to work on the first season and then go off and do movies. Sheik didn't want to be second in command on a show when he's used to being a top dog, and so he decided to go off and do something else, which is something that happens and is not a big deal. Robert Kirkman, TV Guide On December 3, 2010, in an interview with Entertainment Weekly, executive producer Galen Hurd commented, it's completely inaccurate. In the writer's room, there are people that have set up other projects that will be their first priority if their own series is picked up as a pilot or if it's a series. I think, Igli, just decided that he wants to run his own show. She revealed that it would be likely for the show to return in October 2011, as Darabont and Kirkman planned on mapping out the next season early in 2011. She also confirmed that, Every one of the principal cast is signed up for multiple seasons. In July 2011, series developer and showrunner Frank Darabont stepped down from his position as showrunner for the series, over unclear circumstances. See lawsuit below. Executive producer Glenn Mazzara was appointed the new showrunner in Darabont's place. New writers joined the writing staff in the second season, including co-executive producer Evan Riley. Producer Scott M. Jimple, story editor Angela Kang, and David Leslie Johnson. New writers in the third season included producers Nicole Beatty and Sankayo Kim, with Frank Renzulli contributing a freelance script. After the conclusion of the third season, Glenn Mazzara stepped down from his position as showrunner and executive producer for the series, per a mutual agreement between Mazzara and AMC. The press release read. Both parties acknowledge that there is a difference of opinion about where the show should go moving forward, and conclude that it is best to part ways. Scott M. Jimple succeeded Mazzara as showrunner for season 4, with new writers joining the writing staff, such as Curtis Gwynn, Channing Powell, and Matt Negrete. Writing, the television series generally tends to follow Kirkman's comic series across major characters and plots. For instance, events of the premiere episode of season 7 correlate to events in issue number 100 of the comics. The show does not attempt to go step by step with the comics, and has leeway in the narrative. In particular, the show's writers, along with Kirkman, often transfer how a character is died in the comics to a different character in the show. For example, in season 4, where Herschel Green is beheaded by the governor in the standoff with Rick's group at the prison, in the comic, Tyrese is the one who receives this fate. Some of the television characters, like Carol, have far outlived their comic counterpart, while others that have already been killed off, like Sophia and Andrea, remained alive for some time in the ongoing comic series. Bear McCreary was hired to compose the score for the series. McCreary stated that the main theme was based on his viewing of production designs for the opening title sequence. Instead of doing a full theme song as with his earlier works, McCreary chose to use a simple, repeating motif from the strings section. It repeats over and over, and in fact in the pilot episode, you start hearing it before the main title begins, and this is something that continues episode to episode. You hear the main title music before the main title begins, so you know it's coming. That, to me, was the little hook, that little thing that, whenever you hear it, it takes you to the series. Bear McCreary. Soundtracks. Four soundtracks for The Walking Dead have been released to date. The Walking Dead, AMC Original Soundtrack, Volume 1 was released on March 17, 2013. The second volume was released on March 25, 2014. Songs of Survival is a soundtrack for the third season and it was released on August 27, 2013 by Republic Records as a Walmart exclusive for the special edition release of the third season. Songs of Survival, Volume 2 is a soundtrack for the fourth season and it was released on August 26, 2014, 
by Republic Records as a Walmart exclusive of the fourth season release. Makeup Greg Nicotero is an executive producer and the key special effects makeup artist on the series. Each walker is put through zombie school and is taught how to move like zombies. There are three levels of zombie makeup, hero, mid-round and deep background. Hero zombies are featured walkers and are completely made over from head to toe. Midge round zombies get highlights and shadows on the face, but do not get close enough to the camera to require full makeup. Deep background zombies often wear masks and are only meant to be used as a backdrop. The Walking Dead is mostly filmed in Georgia. The series is completely shot on 16mm film. David Tattersall was the director of photography for the pilot episode with David Boyd as the director of photography on the remainder of the episodes. Production design is done by Greg Melton and Alex Hajdu. The effects team includes veteran special effects makeup designers Greg Nicotero and Toby Sells, special effects coordinator Daryl Pritchett, and visual effects supervisors Sam Nicholson and Jason Sperling. Marketing The Walking Dead debuted during the same week in 120 countries. As part of an expansive campaign to advertise and heighten anticipation for the premiere, AMC and Fox International Channels coordinated a worldwide zombie invasion event on October 26, 2010. The stunt involved invading 26 major cities within a 24-hour period, starting with Taipei and Hong Kong, and ending in Los Angeles for the U.S. premiere. The show's official website released, just prior to the San Diego Comic Con in 2010 a motion comic based on issue number one of the original comic and voiced by Phil Lamar. The site also posted a making of documentary primarily about the first episode, as well as a number of other behind-the-scenes videos and interviews. In the documentary, comic series creator and show executive producer Robert Kirkman as well as artist Charlie Adlard say they are pleased with how faithful the show is to the comic and remark on the similarities between the actors and the comic's original character drawings. Action figures of characters from the series were created for release in November 2011 and have continued throughout the years with eight lineups. The figures, which are manufactured by McFarlane Toys, are designed to resemble the actors on the series. Figures created to resemble the characters as drawn in the comic book were released in September 2011. Green initiatives with a primary objective of reducing the environmental impacts of film and television productions, including The Walking Dead, producer Gail Ann Hurd has directed the cast, crew, production team, suppliers, and bloggers about her shows to adopt the Doddle app to make the production almost paper-free. This works by digitally transmitting interactive call sheets and other intra-team and team supplier communications, such as directions, images, menus, and updates, to people's cell phones and tablets. Heard said of using Doddle, in addition to conserving paper, it's also easier, and it's better for security. People are less likely to leave their smartphone or tablet lying around for someone else to pick up. Her describes additional steps taken to increase efficiency and cut production costs. If you use vehicles that get better gas mileage, that are electric or hybrids, you're going to pay a lot less in fuel. If you use compact fluorescent bulbs, you're going to save a lot of money in utilities. If you recycle even your own sets, and use them again. That's going to save money. You don't have to buy new lumber. So there are cost savings, absolutely. Additionally, the production team aims to reduce vehicle idling, which decreases carbon dioxide emissions. Heard also cuts down on plastic waste by personally using a refillable, stainless steel eco-usable water bottle and promoting its use among her colleagues. She shared, on a lot of my projects I give them as crew gifts before we start production and have water stations available, but you can't force people to use them. Franchise and spin-offs webisodes To date, three web series based on The Walking Dead have been released via AMC's website Torn Apart, 2011, Cold Storage, 2012, and The Oath, 2013. Motion Comic In 2011, AMC debuted an animated comic book version of The Walking Dead novel's beginning. Featuring the voice of actor Phil Lamar, 
Talking Dead, a live after show titled Talking Dead premiered on AMC on October 16, 2011, following the encore presentation of The Walking Dead's season 2 premiere. Talking Dead features host Chris Hardwick discussing the latest episode with fans, actors, and producers of The Walking Dead. In September 2013, AMC announced they were developing a companion series to The Walking Dead which follows a different set of characters created by Robert Kirkman. On March 9, 2015, AMC announced it had ordered the show to series, with a two-season commitment. The show's title, Fear the Walking Dead, was revealed on March 27, 2015. The first season, consisting of six episodes, premiered on August 23, 2015. Parodies and spoofs Due to its popularity, The Walking Dead has inspired dozens of parodies and spoofs featured on YouTube channels like Bad Lip Reading and TV shows such as Saturday Night and Mad TV. Bad Lip Reading made a widely viewed parody involving Rick and the Governor, entitled Labibabida Bibidum. The series cast was shown the parody at the San Diego Comic Con in 2013, and David Morrissey, who portrays the governor, reacted by saying he now understood why so many people would walk up to him on the street and blurt, Hey, Labibabida Bibidum. Until seeing the video, he had wondered, What's wrong with these people? The Walking Dead has also been represented as a live comedy performance by English comedian Dan Willis at the Edinburgh Festival. Scenes from the pilot were screened July 23, 2010, as part of the San Diego Comic Con in 2010. It premiered on AMC on October 31, 2010, and premiered internationally on Fox International channels during the first week of November. Almost two weeks before the official premiere on AMC, the pilot episode leaked online. International broadcast rights for the show were sold and announced on June 14, 2010. The show airs on Fox International channels in 126 countries in 33 languages. The fifth season debuted its first part on October 13, 2014. The second part premiered on February 9, 2015. Home Media. The Season 1 DVD and Blu-ray was released on March 8, 2011. A three-disc special edition of the first season, featuring new featurettes and audio commentaries, was released on DVD and Blu-ray on October 4, 2011. The European versions of the first season DVD and Blu-ray are edited for gore, with cuts to Episode 2, Guts, Episode 3, Tell It to the Frogs, Episode 4. Vatos, and Episode 5, Wildfire. Until E1, WVG re-released the first season in DACH in a special uncut version on DVD and Blu-ray on May 31, 2013. The Season 2 DVD and Blu-ray was released on August 28, 2012. It was also released as a limited edition Blu-ray packaged as a miniature zombie head designed by McFarlane Toys. Special features include audio commentaries, deleted scenes, webisodes, and several featurettes. The Season 3 DVD and Blu-ray was released on August 27, 2013. It was also released as a limited edition Blu-ray, packaged as a miniature version of the Governor's Zombie Head Aquarium Tank designed by Greg Nicotero and sculpted by McFarlane Toys. Special features include audio commentaries, deleted scenes, and several featurettes. The Season 4 DVD and Blu-ray was released on August 26, 2014. It was also released as a limited edition Blu-ray, packaged with a tree walker designed by McFarlane Toys. Special features include audio commentaries, deleted scenes, and several featurettes, as well as extended episodes which are exclusive to the Blu-ray. The Season 5 DVD and Blu-ray was released on August 25, 2015. Syndication My network acquired the broadcast syndication rights to the series, premiering on October 1, 2014. The version that airs on My Network is edited to meet broadcast television standards. All seasons of The Walking Dead have been well reviewed by recognized critics with an 89% approval rating for the series to date on Rotten Tomatoes. For the first season, 24 Rotten Tomatoes critics gave it a positive review, 
with an average score of 7. 49 tenths. That site's consensus states, blood spattered, emotionally resonant, and white knuckle intense. The Walking Dead puts an intelligent spin on the overcrowded zombie subgenre. Metacritic scored the first season 82 one hundredths based on 25 critic reviews, 23 of which were positive, 2 mixed, and none negative. Heather Havrileski of Salon.com included the show on their list of 9 new TV shows not to miss, giving it a grade of A, with the author saying, a film quality drama series about zombies? Somebody pinch me. For the second season, 83% of 22 critic reviews on Rotten Tomatoes were positive, with an average score of 8. 09 over 10. The site's consensus states, the second season of The Walking Dead fleshes out the characters while maintaining the grueling tension and gore that made the show a hit. Of 22 Metacritic critic reviews, 18 were positive, 4 were mixed and none were negative. Their average score was 81 hundredths. Early criticism of the show focused on the slow pace of the second season, particularly the first half. Ken Tucker of Entertainment Weekly, described the series as a nighttime soap, comparing it to a parody of a Samuel Beckett play that had very little sense of direction and few appearances of walkers. Nate Rawlings of Times Online Entertainment section noted that the pace during the first half of this season has been brutally slow. They've tried to develop individual characters, but each subplot meant to add a layer to a character has been quickly resolved. Later reviews from other critics, such as Scott Wampler of Collider.com recognize the increased quality of the second half, stating it seemed far more intense, more interesting, better written. Recognizing the overall season, Kevin Yeoman of Screen Rant offered praise saying the writers succeeded in unshackling themselves from the intermittent monotony brought about by the serial nature of the show. The third season had 88% of Rotten Tomatoes 30 critics giving it a positive review, with an average score of 8. 12 tenths. The site's consensus states, the palpable terror and visceral thrills continue in the third season of The Walking Dead, along with a deeper sense of the people who inhabit its apocalyptic landscape. Metacritic's 19 critics rated the season 82 one hundredths, all of whom gave a positive review. Vern Gay of Newstay claimed that the season 3 premiere doesn't disappoint going on to say that there are spots where you will yell out at the screen, oh, my god that just didn't happen. Yes, the new season is that good, concluding his review by giving the season an A plus rating. For season 4, 86% of Rotten Tomatoes 30 critic reviews were positive, with an average score of 7. 66 tenths. The site's consensus states, consistently thrilling, with solid character development and enough gore to please Grindhouse fans. This season of The Walking Dead continues to demonstrate why it's one of the best horror shows on television. Metacritic scored the season 75 one hundredths based on 16 critic reviews, 13 of which were positive, 3 mixed, and none negative. The fifth season had 90% of Rotten Tomatoes 31 critic reviews rating it positively, with an average score of 7. 88 tenths. The site's consensus states, Thanks to a liberal dose of propulsive, bloody action and enough compelling character moments to reward longtime fans, The Walking Dead's fifth season continues to deliver top notch entertainment. Metacritic scored the fifth season 80 one hundredths based on 11 critic reviews, all of which were positive. For season 6, 78% of Rotten Tomatoes' 23 critic reviews were positive, with an average score of 7. 35 tenths. The site's consensus states, six seasons in, The Walking Dead is still finding ways to top itself, despite slow patches that do little to advance the plot. Metacritic scored the sixth season 79 one hundredths based on ten critic reviews, nine of which were positive, one mixed, and none negative. For the seventh season, 63% of Rotten Tomatoes' ten critic reviews rated it positively with an average score of 6. 97 tenths. The site's consensus is, increased character depth and effective world building helps The Walking Dead overcome a tiresome reliance on excessive, gratuitous violence. Ratings. The Walking Dead has the highest total viewership of any series in cable television history, 
including its third through sixth seasons, during which it averaged the most 18 to 49 year old viewers of all cable or broadcast television shows. Total viewership for its season 5 premiere was 17.3 million, the most watched series episode in cable history. In 2016, a New York Times study of the 50 TV shows with the most Facebook likes found that like most other zombie shows, The Walking Dead is most popular in rural areas, particularly southern Texas and eastern Kentucky. The Walking Dead was nominated for Best New Series by the Writers Guild of America Awards 2011 and Best Television Series Drama by the 68th Golden Globe Awards. The show was named one of the top 10 television programs of 2010 by the American Film Institute Awards 2010. For the 37th Saturn Awards, the series received six nominations, for Best Television Presentation, Andrew Lincoln for Best Actor in Television, Sarah Wayne Cullies for Best Actress on Television, Stephen Yun for Best Supporting Actor in Television, Laurie Holden for Best Supporting Actress in Television, and Noah Emmerich for Best Guest Starring Role in Television. The series was nominated for Best Drama Series by the inaugural First Critics' Choice Television Awards. The pilot episode Days Gone By received three nominations from the 63rd Primetime Emmy Awards, for Outstanding Sound Editing for a Series and Outstanding Special Visual Effects for a Series and one for Outstanding Prosthetic Makeup for a Series, Miniseries, Movie, or Special. For the 41st Saturn Awards, the series received its highest number of nominations, with a total of seven, including for the show itself. Andrew Lincoln for Best Actor on Television, Norman Reedus for Best Supporting Actor on Television, Emily Kinney and Melissa McBride for Best Supporting Actress on Television, Andrew J. West for Best Guest Star on Television, and Chandler Riggs for Best Young Performer on Television. Lawsuits Darabont's departure as showrunner in July 2011 during the second season came as a surprise to many as it came shortly after the season's premiere and a few days after that year's Comic Con, where Darabont helped to promote the show. It was speculated that he was unable to adjust to the schedule of running a television series. However, The Hollywood Reporter reported that AMC had fired him. There had been reported difficulties in the production of the second season, including disputes over planned budget cuts and executive meddling and it was known that Darabont and AMC had several discussions relating to these factors. However, neither Darabont, AMC, nor the cast nor crew of The Walking Dead spoke about the reasons for his firing. In December 2013, Darabont and his agents from Creative Artists Agency, CAR, filed a lawsuit against AMC in a New York court citing breach of contract. A central part of Darabont's lawsuit accuses AMC of denying him and the car the promised profits from the success of the series, based on how AMC had used vertical integration in producing and distributing The Walking Dead. As stated in Darabont's filing, he had initially entered into a contract with AMC to have a third-party studio produce the show, from which he would have obtained 12.5% of that entity's profits. After standard deductions, AMC wanted to produce the show in-house, and for the first season, Darabont's lawyers had been assured that Darabont would be protected from self-dealing fees by having AMC commit to imputed license fees equivalent to those of other independent studios, with Darabont earning profit from that. Darabont's suit contends that when the show's popularity took off, AMC presented a license fee deal to Darabont around February 2011 that used an unconscionably low license fee formula such that AMC could report the show running at a loss and ensuring that Darabont would never see any profit from the show. As an example, the suit references statements in 2012, following season 2, that AMC claimed the show was running at a $49 million deficit. Despite being one of the most popular shows in broadcast, Darabont's suit contends he was fired just at the start of the season 2 so that AMC would avoid having to pay him. Initial discovery phase hearings were held in 2014. Darabont's lawyers sought to gain information from AMC on their other shows, specifically Breaking Bad and Mad Men to obtain a fair market value for The Walking Dead. AMC asserted it had done no wrongdoing, 
had already paid Darabont $3 million up front for two seasons, and was able to properly set the imputed license fee that worked into the profit formula for Darabont. The network resisted the request to provide otherwise confidential information on the other shows. The court granted Darabont's lawyers access to the requested information as part of the discovery phase. Darabont described crisis-level problems during the show's production while under deposition, claiming that AMC had cut the per-episode budget from $3.4 million to $3 million while keeping the tax credit offered by the state of Georgia for filming there effectively reducing the production budget by 25%. In August 2015, Darabont requested to amend his original complaint that AMC further reduced his profits from season 2 as his firing mid-season meant he was not fully vested in the season, allowing AMC to reduce the profits paid him. Darabont's amended request points out that he had written and produced all the episodes in that season already and was entitled to the proper profit share. The judge granted this amendment in February 2016, partially influenced by concerns raised in Darabont's deposition. At the end of the discovery phase in September 2016, Darabont's lawyers stated they are seeking damages of over $280 million. AMC stated they will vigorously defend against the lawsuit. If the case does go to trial, it is expected to occur during 2018. Summary judgment statements were completed in July 2017, with the judge expected to rule in August. In August 2017, Robert Kirkman, Gail Ann Hurd, Glenn Mazzara and David Alpert filed a similar lawsuit against AMC citing breach of contract over profits owed to them as a result of AMC's vertical integration. As with Darabont, each had been given a certain percentage of the show's profits based on if the show was produced by a third party, but when it was transitioned to AMC Studios, their share was dramatically reduced. The Hollywood Reporter estimated that if the four seek similar damages as Darabont, the lawsuit could be as high as $1 billion.